Good afternoon. I'd like to call the July 18, 2018 meeting of the Royal Oak Downtown Development Authority to order. Uh, at this point, I'd like to open up public comment. Is anybody out here for public comment? Good afternoon. Uh, I'm David Richards. I'm here as an attorney on behalf of uh, National Valet. And I'm here, I don't know if you need a, an address. No, that's okay. Uh, I'm here to ask you to reconsider a uh, decision made at your June 20th meeting. At that time, you considered an application uh, for valet parking to be used at three spaces on 3rd Street uh, at the uh, corner of Williams in Royal Oak. Uh, my client found out about the hearing two days ahead of time or that it would be on the agenda, was up north with his family, was not able to get to town to appear. Uh, he should have requested that it be put off to the next meeting. Uh, he's not a regular at meetings such as this at the city commission or uh, the DDA, and he didn't think to do that, and so he was not here and did not have representation on June 20th. Uh, we would point out that uh, National Valet is a small business in the layman's sense. Basically, my client runs the business by himself. Uh, listening to the applicant is fundamental to making a proper decision for the City of Royal Oak, so we're asking you to give us an opportunity to hear the reasons why the application should be approved. The points we would talk about if you give us the opportunity, if you do vote to reconsider, is a question of whether the proposal is beneficial to the parking situation in downtown Royal Oak, and whether or not the use of a, a nearby alley, which was suggested, I believe, previously, is a practical alternative. I'm not going to get into all of that unless you give us the opportunity uh, to speak, so I'm asking that you do uh, reconsider that earlier decision. Uh, we are aware that the City Commission has a final say, uh, but my experience is that if you come to the City Commission or similar body after a negative vote at an advisory body, you're starting out with at least one, if not two, strikes against you. So we would like an opportunity to make a presentation, give you a chance to consider it, and uh, go on from there. So we appreciate your consideration with regard to reconsideration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Richards. Anybody else? Carol. Good afternoon, Carol Hennessy, 258 East off my road. Um, I just want to comment about the flowers. Um, I think they're beautiful. And um, at the beginning, um, some of them didn't look like they were really full, but they weren't because they were just growing. And now they're in full bloom, and I think it looks beautiful. And um, I hope you continue to do it. I know there was some bad talk on Facebook about them, but I don't see that. Um, I think they look nice, and, and I hope you continue to do that. And I, I don't know if you got a chance to talk uh, after last meeting about the um, uh, structure with the crack in it. I, I didn't, but I, unfortunately, Mr. Johnson has not, has not been here for the past Well, minutes. he did have somebody go there and put a Band-Aid on it. Right. Is the way I would describe it. Because um, mm -hmm. you can see the crack. You can see what they used to try and put it together. And for such a beautiful monument... I think it should be fixed correctly. So whatever you can do, I'd appreciate it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Karlowski. Okay. Rick Karlowski, 419 Virginia. My first time talking to the DDA. I was, uh, I was watching the last DDA meeting just by chance. Uh, so based on a conversation you had with a developer who wants to do the old bank building. Uh, I'm not sure, what, what is your plan for current business owners? Because it sounds like you guys have pretty much used up all of your resources for the three mega development office buildings and are throwing a whole lot of hope and prayer that the three office buildings are just going to do everything you want them to do and there's not going to be any downside to what you guys are doing. Um, is, there a, is there a true economic development study that was done? Because... Uh, I keep hearing the $234 million stuff, and I saw the little one piece of paper thing by Todd Fenton, but that's not an economic development study. I, I can do that on Google. I mean, you're going to have a whole lot of, I mean, what, how much day business are you going to lose because you can't find any parking? 
what are people go, supposed to do who currently own property if they want to expand or change venue or change use and need additional parking spots? Because it sounds like you've got everything already lined up for these three office buildings. I don't get this. I don't know why you would want not want people expanding and rate and, and big, having bigger buildings on your main street if you're throwing everything into these three office buildings you know that's a crapshoot i mean i've seen i've seen all of this stuff i mean how many times have we seen grandiose expectations of a stadium that have come to naught right i mean same economic development numbers are always used and they never pan out so I guess my question is, what is the plan that you have for the, for the downtown, for the rest of the for current property owners who want to expand or improve or change their property? Because it sounds like uh, all the funds were used up and, uh, you know, first come, first serve and have a good time. Because it, it made no, that entire conversation made absolutely no sense to me at all. A guy wants to try and expand his place and can't get any parking. <laughs> That's a hell of a place to be in. I guess you have to bring your own parking now if you want to to redevelop your property, and that's that's certainly not a way to go. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Ms. Harrison. <clears throat> Laura Harrison, 2729 uh, Trafford Road. <laughs> um, probably 10, 15 years ago, Sandy Johnson, who at that time owned the Hallmark store, and I were very active in getting more traffic lights downtown because the amount of traffic, especially on Main Street. But well, we were successful at third, but now we need another one at seventh because now you have the seniors on the other side of the street, on the east side of the street, having to cross over to the west side of Maine to get to their cars, which you are parking over there. Well, seniors cannot run. I know, I'm one of them. They need a traffic light down there. And the best place to put it, after all of our studies, is at 7th and Maine. It is south of the railroad tracks by about a half a block because the railroad tracks are on an angle. There would be a way, I think, that you could open up that fencing so they could walk across their existing parking lot through a, a pass-through to the corner of 7th, and then they have a traffic light. Now, whether the traffic light is a push-button kind or not, I don't. I think it should be on all the time because they take off from Lincoln trying to get <clears throat> halfway through downtown. So I, th I really, and we, you know, we've got a problem. I've got a whole list of near misses by cars that will not stop even though they're supposed to. I mean, there was all kinds of hoopla and la la when people were parking in the parking lot that was here and walking across the 11 mile road to get to the theater. And they, right away they, they put the crossing and painted this and all that other stuff. Well, what about these people? You know, you know we're, we're older, but we will not be forgotten. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Next. <coughs> Wolf. I'm doing boy girl boy girl. <laughs> it's only fair. Uh, two things have come to mind. Please spare me a minute because you know I do a lot of thinking. I, I'm concerned about this town. You know it occurred to me while I uh, while this was going on that uh, Mr. Bolgi is reserving 8,000 square foot for a restaurant. Now, is it fair to Mr. B's or to Third Rock or to the other surrounding restaurants that they're denied parking permits, but yet in the contract for, his, for tenants of his building, including any future restaurant he rents to, he gets to use that parking, they get to use that parking structure. Is that fair? Okay. Now, by the way, I'm very concerned about the facades downtown. 
Uh, I feel this is a great opportunity to get them corrected. Serendipity, I came across a standing offer of the DDA for either businesses or property owners to apply for a 50-50 up to $10,000 incentive to improve their facades. I don't know if you still remember that. I suggest this obviously outdated incentive should be, could be increased up to $20,000 for at least the period of downtown construction as that would make the most sense. After all, to fix up one half of the pig and ignore the other half, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Now, uh, for one example, the first National Bank building, which is iconic, needs to be cleaned badly. It, I heard in the old days they used to do sandblasting, but now they can use other things. I notified Starbucks about that, by the way, in Seattle and mentioned it to them. Then there are long time, uh, now it also, there are long time tenants that are, that are sandbagging. They have, a re they replace an, with their uh, business signs with new signs, but fail to, re to paint or replace the rest of their neglected frontage. I suggest a lien uh, be taken against them for any re lease renewal and that uh, if they don't take advantage of this incentive, that, uh, th that the incentive be voided. And that, uh, again, a lien be imposed. You, you need to make some laws. DDA needs to grow some teeth. That's what I'm saying. And, and police itself. It's also come to mind that really needs to be investigated, possibly by FOIA, is, is the possibility of abuse of parking permits by city employees, uh, families, friends of certain people that are always after all, there are always people that who feel they are entitled. This is urgent considering there's a shortage of permit parking. I'm sorry, but I consider businesses, especially close to the construction, such as Bukis, Mr. B's, Little Sushi, to be far more important than city employees who just may be uh, uh, inconvenienced. Possibly put in some pea gravel parking lots in one of the parks nearby to, to, to where city employees can park, something, but it's very important to open up to, uh, to get back to parking permits. And I cannot fathom for one, I can't even fathom for a second why parking permits were suspended when these office buildings are not even built yet, no less, no less occupied. I would like to see you renegotiate the agreement with Etkin and Boji that until 50% of their offices, respected offices are leased, that the parking permit agreement be suspended and you allow businesses to at least survive. I can't imagine uh, a mother, uh, a single mother working part-time in a restaurant paying uh, huge parking fees they never had to pay before. And also you have college students, et cetera. These restaurants are in trouble. They depend on foot traffic and they, they depend on TOs. Any restaurant owners here, you know what a TO is? That's table turnover. You know, so this is what, what businesses depend on. And from what I've heard, there are some serious problems with, with, with certain businesses being behind in their rents, uh, some going into bank, some actually have been in bankruptcy even before this construction crisis. And uh, lastly, one last remark is, uh, oh, oh, Ed, Ed, by the way, uh, that's imperative that uh, old the old destruction needs to be looked at for expansion. Add that it's imperative all permit parking be confined to the top three floors. Add that the two-hour free parking, like Birmingham, needs to be 24-7, not just before 5 p.m. This would encourage... Uh, parking in the structures, especially on weekends and evenings when we need it the most. Add that the private security patrols could be hired, and that would uh, give, make the public feel a heck of a lot safer. And one last remark on, on the future, any future downtown park. I wish the DDA would wake up, get involved, and realize how important a uh, first-class downtown park to support a first-class office building and a Hyatt Hotel, how important a downtown park would be for a city. After all, look at Detroit with spending multi-millions on their riverfront in Jefferson and in Campus Martius. <coughs> they know how important downtown parks are for bringing in foot traffic. I know it's only two square acres, but make it the, the best two square, two square acre, two foot, I mean, two acre park you've, that any city has ever seen. And I guarantee you, 
this will put where all look on the map. So please, DDA people, especially landlords and property owners, you're the ones who should get behind grant writing and fundraising to make sure that a lot more than $5 million is going to be spent on this two-acre park. And, and I guarantee you, many of your problems will be over. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. Ms. Kim. Good afternoon. I'm Shelley Kemp. I'm the Executive Director for the Royal Oak Chamber of Commerce, and I'm just here to thank you for your support for our art show that happened in June, The Art of Fire. Um, you guys um, definitely helped us do some more uh, PR and marketing and with uh, with your support, and we truly appreciated it. This year, um, over F, from the last six years, we had the highest marks from our artists, the highest marks from our attendees that we surveyed, and I know um, the, the, the businesses that I did get to speak to that weekend, even though it rained, um, it was still, I think, um, uh, uh, several notches above what we've done in the past. So I just wanted to thank you for your support. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Good afternoon, all. Kim Gibbs. I'm one of your city commissioners, which you already know that. Um, I am up here today to echo Ms. Harrison's concern about 7th and Main, the corner there. Um, I have been there. I have been almost hit by several vehicles, large trucks as well as small vehicles. It is a huge hazard. I am presenting this to traffic at the next meeting, but since, since Ms. Harrison brought it up, I echo those feelings. Um, I also strongly encourage you to reconsider hearing um, National Valet and Mr. Richard's proposal. I, I think it, I have heard parts of their plans. I think it would be invaluable to the city, and I strongly encourage hearing it. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Ms. Gibbs. Anybody else? All right. Seeing none, I'll close public comment. Move on to number three, the approval of the meeting minutes from June 20th. I assume everybody's looked these over, <coughs> and I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Moved by Director Riley. I'll second. Second by Director Safaya. Any comments? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, number four, expense items. I don't think there's anything here in looking at this uh, over the past few days that needs any action. It's just informational. Just, uh, just looking at one, uh, Mr. Cameron, it says contractor services final. So now he's a full fledged Royal Oak employee, correct? <coughs> All right, good. Well, that's done. Are there any questions on this from anybody? Nope. All right. And then number five, the facade grant application for Motor City Gas. I don't know if uh, Mr. Safire or Mr. Twain. Uh, well, actually, Sean's been dealing with them more or less. He prepared the, okay. uh, right. the letter or memo to the board. Uh, and I'm sure you can walk through the highlights as recommended by the uh, Infrastructure Committee. And then if members of the Infrastructure Committee have comments, I think they could probably jump in. So at the last uh, regular board meeting, um, the board uh, referred the uh, facade grant application for Motor City Gas located at 325 and 327 East 4th Street back to the Infrastructure Committee uh, for further discussion. Uh, and at that meeting, the um, Infrastructure Committee uh, came to the following recommendations that it uh, was seeking to bring back to the board at this meeting. Uh, they still stand by treating the two applications that it originally received from the applicant as one application considering as how it's one joint parcel. Uh, that would qualify it for 50% uh, of the reimbursement with a cap of $10,000. Um, what was altered um, was the scope of work that the, uh, the committee was recommending be included in this. And that was brought up to the applicant, uh, which uh, they did not have a problem with. Uh, so at 325 East 4th Street, um, the main work there was to install two overhead garage doors, 
327 East 4th Street, which is the uh, adjacent building, uh, was to replace the windows and doors and then paint the facade the same color as 325. Um, so there is a uh, recommended resolution for the uh, board's consideration um, that the grant amount be $10,000. I don't know if the committee chair wanted to add anything to that. Or... Just briefly, um, this when this originally came to us, we uh, discussed this early. We had multiple meetings with the business owner. Um, at that time, um, we made a determination that we were going to treat this as one application, um, as Sean said. Um, uh, that being said, we had uh, initially made a recommendation to the DEA for a grant of uh, $7,000. Um, some of the scope of work had changed and some things had changed, so we were asked to reconsider. Um, we did reconsider the application and we went back and met with the uh, applicant over again. Um, and this is what we've come out of it from, from that meeting. Um, so the applicant is um, getting um, the max um, that the program allows us to give at this time. So we're comfortable with that, and I believe if any of the other committee members want to comment, they can, but I think that was pretty much unanimous consent across the board. So we've looked at this quite a bit, and at this point, uh, I don't know, like I said, is there any questions for Mr. Sapai or anybody in the committee, Mr. Riley? Yeah, um, question. And just in, when, when you guys met the committee, I'm not sure, was was uh, was Mr. Lockwood or anybody else from Motor City there? I'm just... Twice we've met with them, okay. once in person and once on a conference call. And I'm just I'm just wondering, so the the reason for the facade grant, right, is it that they're acquiring this uh, the space next to them, correct? They currently have the space next to them. They, 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 cur they currently have it, right. but in other words, it's an addition from their original. Um, they they had put in two applications, one for each space, and the board determined that um, we were going to, because it is one parcel, we were going to treat this as one application. Okay. Um, and therefore, when we reconsidered this, they reconsidered the scope of work. We reviewed the scope of work. We had them make some changes. And we came to the conclusion that these, this was the type of work that we wanted to see get, get done. Um, and they agreed to that, and that's where we ended up. And, and, I, and my question, I'm just from, 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 a, from a business standpoint. In other words, when, when they started out, they had 325, I think, and they've added on 327, correct? Or did they always have the two spaces? As far as I know, they always had two spaces. I don't. They always had two spaces. Yep. There was an, one application for each address, so there was one application okay. for three two five, and then one application for three two seven. So from day one, they've always operated out of three twenty five and three twenty seven. Right. Got it. Okay. No problem. If there's nothing further, I'll move the uh, close resolution. They might be able to hear us. <laughs> We have a motion by Director Safaya. Second. Second by. It's probably the guy. I can't hear us on the microphone. Second by Director Baglio. Microphone open. Who's that phone? Okay. I got a motion by Director Safaya. Second by Director Baglio. Does anybody have any questions? I just want to remind everybody there's six of us here today. And bylaws require that uh, for any action to pass, there has to be at least five votes. It's probably upstairs. Yeah, it's somebody's, somebody's microphone, probably. The control room. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. <laughs> <laughs> is, it the IR, is it the IRS calling? One of us says, the IRS calling, we, we need your credit card number to pay your taxes. Okay. That's why I'm here. All right. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any discussion about the motion on the table? As opposed to the phone call. None. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. All right. All right. Brings us on to, what are we on, number six, the advertising and marketing agreement with Factory Detroit. 
I guess uh, I will take this, I guess. Um, the Consumer Marketing Committee um, put out a RFP uh, for a marketing group to handle our marketing. And the history of marketing with uh, the DDA, at least in the almost eight years I've been a member, has been that uh, uh, it's been Band-Aid marketing, pretty much. I think that's, you could describe it as that. You know, we've, we've had little projects come in and out, but we've never had like the one clear focus and direction. And uh, when I first became a DDA director, we did have an agency. And they had kind of evolved from an agency into a uh, event group. And uh, they resigned the account because that wasn't really their cup of tea. So we decided that it was time, rather than spending money a little here, a little there, to try to get a clear focus and an aim and actually hire someone who knew what they were doing and, and were professionals in the business. Uh, we interviewed three uh, different companies. All three were very good. Um, each one had different strengths. Um, we felt that Factory Detroit seemed to have, was pretty good at uh, representing what we thought we would needed to be represented. Um, they scored a few points because they're also in Royal Oak and within the DDA territory. That didn't hurt. Uh, but I will say that their, uh, their presentation was good and their uh, track record and the track record of the owner is very good. And, uh, I would invite uh, Mark and uh, Isabella. I'd, Mark Lance and Isabella, I'm not going to try. <laughs> Get your last name. Well, my name's Mark Lance. Uh, this is uh, Isabella Skonyechka. She's one of my uh, partners in the agency. That's what I was going to say. Good call, Jay. I would have been right. Okay. I always greet her with, hello, Isabella Skonyechka, just so I keep <laughs> Anyway, we've been in business here in uh, downtown uh, Royal Oak since, well, we opened our doors in our, in our space on uh, June 15th of 2013, and uh, so it's been a quick five years, and we're over at the corner of Center Street and, uh, and Third Street in the three-story building there where uh, we're in the, we're the, the second floor. And uh, when we saw the uh, RFP when it came in through the mitten system, uh, we like, well, we want to do that because uh, this has been our home. And I will say, we very much deliberately chose Royal Oak as our home. Uh, I live in Birmingham. Uh, when I moved here, I, uh, I, I was going to move to, to, to Royal Oak, but didn't find a house I, that, that I really thought would be great. Uh, so I ended up in Birmingham, which is very nice. But uh, in terms of starting an ad agency, Royal Oak seemed, seemed like the place to be because A, it's not a far drive for me from home. B, it's got that walkable downtown thing that I personally like having moved here from, having lived in large, basically cities uh, before I moved to, to uh, Michigan. And, uh, and it was a great place to recruit people to. I found it a lot easier to staff up an agency uh, saying, hey, we're, we're in downtown Royal Oak and showing them the places you know, that are around us than say if we were on Big Beaver or something like that. It just it has that kind of creative class kind of vibe. So we like this is our kind of place. We like that, so we're going to go after this. And and our goal is basically would be to shine a light on. There's a fundamental truth that we like about Royal Oak, which is that it is a uh, it is a wonderfully diverse place. It is. Uh, uh, there's so much to do here. There's so much to do during the day for lunch. There's so much to do after work. There's so much stuff on the weekend. We think that this place stacks up to just about any other place you might go. And, uh, and, and, and there's a great story there to talk about that kind of necessity of Royal Oak being on people's short lists. If they're, a, if they're planning a weekend trip, if they're planning a night out, if they're planning to meet for lunch, if they're whatever they're planning to do, go shopping, what have you, the downtown Royal Oak deserves a place on every list. And so I think if, if you were to look at the proposal we put together, uh, it showcases that passion for this area. It also showcases that ability to kind of create a, a, a big view of this as, as, even with all the changes in, in Metro Detroit since I moved here 15 years ago, a, uh, a very uh, uh, a compelling uh, option on anyone's shopping, entertainment, dining, hanging out kind of uh, agenda. So uh, we're really excited to be doing this if you approve uh, uh, the contract. Yeah. Isabella, you say something too. <laughs> I'm equally excited, so yes, definitely great. <laughs> Writer, so uh, I tend to do more of <laughs> Small fonts. <laughs> All right. We'll talk about that. Anybody have any questions? Um, and, and, and again, I haven't been privy to any of the meetings, just going through this. In terms of the marketing that you'll be doing for us, will there be any public relations involved? And the reason I'm asking that is because it is obviously sorely lacking 
every day in what's going on outside the windows here and what's going on in the media. We, so I'm wondering if, if you are the guys who are going to do that or whether we got to find somebody else to do that. We are in the, not in, a, in, 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 in an adjunct to what you're doing. We are not a PR firm. Uh, okay. We don't do that. I've written my share of press releases uh, for uh, clients over the years, but and we've contributed a lot to uh, helping clients uh, uh, inform their PR strategy. But in terms of uh, the, the smiling and dialing that you have to do to, to work that stuff, that we're at okay. Agency. So that, that's how that's how. I notice it's not in the scope of the agreement. I just wondered whether we'd be able to kill two birds with one stone. engage with if you have a PR, uh, either an individual or a firm. We would very much <coughs> like to engage on that, so we can make sure that what they're doing and what we're doing all kind of works together. If, if the ability, and, and that, that brings me up, and I, and I hate to stand this point, but, it, but it's something I think that's pretty germane to what's going on right now. Because of your area of expertise, having you on board, uh, do you think it might be easier for us to retain, if, we, if the, the, the DDA wanted a PR person, it'd be easier for us to retain a person as, as opposed to an agency? In other words, putting you together with them, there'd be a synergy where that way we'd be able to get away by hiring a person as opposed to an agency. Do you see what it, I mean? it, it certainly could. And, and again, it's the same thing. If, if you've got someone who, who, who needs that help, we're here to help. Okay. All right. Great. And I'm just going to tag on to that. And that, that did come up, I believe, in our interview. And it came up with the other two groups as well. And it wasn't an expectation. And it wasn't part of the RFP. But we asked the question. Okay. Else, so. Okay. No, 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 I know. And then you're right. It wasn't. I know it's not in, in the... And I would volunteer that uh, when you do, uh, you, know, uh, you know, when you launch a, an initiative that we've, been, as we've been talking about, uh, you want your PR to, to, to dovetail exactly with that. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, my experience has been uh, working on, 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 on cl with clients big and small. Uh, you've got to work hand in hand with the, the, the PR people to make sure that that story is, is, is exactly the same, and that, and that we're coming up with ideas that can bounce off each other. Exactly. So, so that the message is is focused, it's disseminated clearly, and everybody's you know on the same page. And, and also, and we get more big ideas that way. I think too. Sure. Anybody else? I just want to piggyback off of some of the uh, things that you said on how Factory came to uh, this contract. Um, this end result here is the direct result of Sean's meetings with stakeholders downtown. Um, We've been talking about it for a while, but it was those meetings that really brought it to the forefront and, and had our uh, Consumer Marketing Committee act on it. So I want to thank Sean for doing that. Um, and also, I'm going to toot your horn a little bit. <laughs> if anybody here has heard about the Pure Michigan campaign, this guy that thought about it thought of it so well, uh, there was a there was a group of us but and there was two of us. <laughs> but i will say this i'm going to say this till the day i die i'm the guy who came up with the phrase pure michigan so every time i see on a license plate on a sign on a carton of milk that was me so. <laughs> and i'm from ohio which makes me double pleased <clears throat> you, <laughs> you, you, you were doing great up till then <laughs> You know who else was from Ohio? Uh, Bo Schembeck. I know. I pretty uh, pronounced every Michigan uh, coach. Uh, <laughs> Brady Hull. Brady Hull. All right. Anybody else? So real quick, Director Yeah, real quick. Um, I don't. I don't think it's for you. I think it's more for the consumer marketing here. Um, will we be developing some sort of uh, not standard or procedure for the communication between this group and our side of the table and? Um, I'm not sure exactly how that all works. This is all kind of new to me. Are, are, are we going to have some... Off the top of my head, um, it, in this, it, we've already, we're already changing the contract before we've even signed it. Um, but the proposal that they gave us, the reason I liked it so much, and it was a tough decision. I mean, the, the, play, the people that we interviewed were stellar. But it, their proposal captured every moment every feeling that our city conveys. It spoke to me in, in hundreds of different ways. They nailed it. Um, and I think it's because they, they work here, they participate in the city, and I think when you see what they've proposed to us, um, you're gonna be blown away. Um, anything over and above that, yes, we can establish uh, a means of communication to uh, expound, add, subtract, whatever. But I think you're gonna really be happy. I mean, the Consumer Marketing Committee will probably do the bulk, although it will filter over to the Business Marketing Committee as well, of course. Uh, we're going to count on Sean and then turn Tim to kind of be the direct conduit, so you won't be getting phone calls from 
nine different people. <laughs> it, it, and, and in that, is there going to be a way that, that um, we keep them in tune as to what's going on? Like, they work like, here. What, what's that? I, I would imagine that they would attend monthly meetings. Yeah. They, work, they work in Royal Oak, so they're... I, 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 I understand that, but they're not at all of our meetings. Oh, and I'm talking about everything that's going on with regard to the DDA. I, I would say anything that was germane to their... To what they need Sean. to be doing, we would uh, we would look at. Yeah, Sean, Sean will think, keep. Will I'd be happy speed. to serve as the liaison. You know, I'm not. I'm not asking that they, they attend the every, every meeting that, that every committee yeah. has and everything like that. But I think they need to be kept in the loop. And I think that's kind of what we we I mean, did discuss. We're asking that. them to market us. We discussed yeah. Sean kind of being that person. So. And I will say one of the things that uh, uh, as soon as we can get together with whatever group we need to do to talk about start talking about plan forward, uh, the sooner the better. Okay. We definitely want to shoot within a certain anything. We any photography or film we shoot, uh, uh, we want to make sure we're doing it uh, reasonably within like the next uh, 60 days or so. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that'll happen. Yeah. Okay. You don't want anything to la hang out till when leaves start falling off trees. Okay. That makes sense. Anybody else? A move we uh, accept both resolutions as recommended. I second. By uh, Director Bagley, a second by Director London. I think we're set with uh, with Mark and Isabella for right now. So yep. thanks so much. For the questions, we'll call you up. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank Enjoy the rest Thank of the meeting. Thank you. Uh, anybody? Any further discussion? Uh, just 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 for clarification, what uh, what was this, what are the two resolutions exactly? Right at the top. The other at the top. All right. I'm right at the bottom. Right there. Right there. We have resolved resolve and further resolved. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Uh huh. Got it. All right. Anything else? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. <coughs> and number seven, food trucks. Perhaps zoning agreement. Sir Twain. Um, for background on this, um, as you'll see in the uh, cover memo, the Planning Commission has uh, discussed at its July 10th meeting a potential amendment to the zoning ordinance uh, that would um, treat food trucks in this CBD uh, or allow them um, under a limited scope. Uh, for a little background, currently the zoning ordinance uh, includes food trucks under transient merchants, uh, seasonal sales, things like that, without a without a separate and distinct definition of, for food trucks. Uh, they're lumped in with uh, uh, other sorts of sales, whether it be fireworks or, or other things in terms of how they're uh, treated under the zoning ordinance. Um, at the direction that the planning division was given, um, the zoning ordinance, you can see it in the attached draft document, the portions that are in yellow are the additions. Uh, the portions of the ordinance that are black and white are already in place. Uh, transient merchants and seasonal outdoor sales activities were only permitted in the zoning ordinance in um, neighborhood business, general business. Uh, zoning districts, neighborhood business too, um, and transient merchants were not allowed in the CBD under the current under the current provisions. They're they're not allowed. Um, so food trucks would not be allowed either. The discussion that went on has been about allowing food trucks under certain distinct and. Uh, criteria and those are really in the uh, end of the document um, section 7769 uh, particularly paragraph G and then sub paragraphs 1 through 10 um, where it would uh, potentially allow if it's approved um, potentially allow food trucks at at uh, establishments that, that do have uh, a liquor license but don't have kitchen facilities. 
Um, it would allow it at uh, uh, on private property, but not in a public right of way. I won't go through all of those, but you can see that uh, uh, there's several criteria there in terms of potentially establishment, establishing food trucks within the central business district. As I said, the Planning Commission discussed this, held a public hearing on it at their July 10th meeting. Uh, they took no action at that time uh, and asked staff to refer it to uh, various associations and organizations in the downtown, those being the Restaurant Association, Chamber of Commerce, and the DDA for input and comment. Uh, so the reason it's here in front of you tonight is, or this afternoon, is for your input and comment or action or whatever you choose to uh, relay back to the Planning Commission. It is tentatively scheduled for their August meeting for further <coughs> consideration. Uh, at the end, at some point, the Planning Commission will make some recommendation, um, and that recommendation would normally float up to the City Commission for its final action, either to adopt, amend, refer back, reject, uh, but the ultimate uh, decision will be made at the City Commission. Okay. Anybody? I, I guess, Mr. Try. I had a, I had a couple questions. <coughs> Currently in the CBD, has anybody, how many establishments would fit, would be eligible for this? Well, I, I haven't really done an analysis of how many in total would be eligible. Um, I know there's probably one or two that might be. Um, and, I, and I can't confirm that for sure because I'm not sure about property ownerships at this point. We haven't done the, that analysis on it. Uh, having said that, it's potential that some other property owner could apply if they meet the criteria operate food trucks as well. So it's not just the situation where existing property owners may be able to do this. It's uh, someone may make a proposal and get through the hoops to, to establish it somewhere else. So. What if a, a business that had the space to do this, that didn't have a liquor license, but got a temporary, like from a 501c3, used a, uh, would they be able to, let's, let's say, like, let's take rocket printing, let's say, and they they might have room to have a food truck in their spot, and if they had a Saturday and a Sunday, use the Historical Society's 501c3 for a temporary license. I don't think the intent of it is to grant it to facilities that have temporary liquor licenses. Most of those have the ability through the city's special event permit. If you're going to do it one weekend, is to apply for a special event permit through the police department and, and grant it. This is more of intended to be of a permanent nature in the sense that uh, while well, transient merchants come and go, the, procedurally the petitioner would file a site plan and special land use request with the Planning Commission if this is adopted. The Planning Commission would look at it, review it, approve it, reject it, approve it with conditions. Um, send it back, they have several options, but assuming they approved it, <coughs> after that, every year, they would be able to rerun the um, food truck operation without any further blessing or approval from the um, City Planning Commission. They may still have to apply for a transient merchant license uh, through the clerk's office, but as long as they complied, they'd be able to run it on an ongoing basis, there wouldn't be. So that's the biggest, I think, difference. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Riley. Um, <clears throat> just, and, and I'm, I'm, this is, I think, I don't know if this is informational or not. I don't think we're acting on this. Um, maybe, maybe not. But first thing that I'm going to say is, um, I mean, just looking at this, I mean, I'm going to say this, this is, to me, this is politics at its worst right here. I mean, this is, this is an amendment that is shoehorned and, and massaged and crafted to fit one organization and one, one business at the time, and it's Motor City Gas. And 
it's a it's an affront it's a slap in the face to um, current restaurants who are going to struggle to survive particularly for the next year particularly in the same area as Motor City Gas um, they are going to need every single meal and customer that they can get to make it through the time and parking spot by the way and to do this I mean if Motor City Gas or anybody else wants to serve food, then do what the restaurateurs have done and build a kitchen, hire a staff, pay the rent. I mean, if you have space to put the food truck on your private property, you have space to build a kitchen. I mean, there's, there, there's, there's no other reason that, that they can't. At the same time, you're putting something out there that could potentially, and, and I, you know, you can't, I can't think of everything else, but, but you brought up, uh, Jay, you brought up Rocket Printing. Who, so Baskin and Robbins is open now. So now, tomorrow, a liquor establishment goes in there without a restaurant. Well, that's a private lot right out in front of them, right on 6th and Washington. So now every night they've got, <coughs> they got space for two or three food trucks there every night where there's just a row of restaurants. Um, we all know, we've all heard the hullabaloo about certain places closing and, um, I mean, whether it's information, misinformation, the bottom line remains that whether it's, um, the restaurants in the area, whether it's Lockhart's, whether it's Royal Oak Brewery, whether it's Rock on 3rd, Mr. B's, all those, like I said, I'll say it again, they need every meal they can get. Um, I was, I was in a bar in Chicago, um, that, that had no kitchen, they served popcorn. They had the menu of six local restaurants right around, right, right within two blocks of the place. And anybody who wanted to eat food could order from one of the restaurants and the restaurants would deliver it there and bring it to them. So to me, that's the win-win here. Motor City Gas or anybody else who wants to serve food, you don't need a food truck. You can help, you can help our community out. You can help the people who've been here for 20 years, the people who have been charitable with the Boys and Girls Club and everybody else for year after year, and not in the worst time ever where parking is at a premium, stick it up their butts and, and give these guys a food truck right here and right now. <clears throat> Thank you, Director Riley. Director Osby. My input and comment would be similar to Director Riley's. Um, it doesn't make sense for us to support such a, a proposal because I think our job as the DDA is to bring business to the downtown, bring people to the downtown, um, and the business is downtown. And I think this proposal would, would serve to take business away. It's great that, that uh, Motor City Gas, if, if that's a... Uh, uh, candidate for this type of, of uh, zoning would, would uh, it's great that they're bringing people down but the real win is for those people to patronize the, the restaurants that exist downtown um, to create some relationships with those restaurants like some kind of you know visit visit uh, a local restaurant and get some discount off of your whatever they are doing at Motor City Gas or any other business you know cultivate those relationships with people that are already here not not bring the, the goal shouldn't be or the philosophy shouldn't be to bring food trucks here and take away from the opportunity to cultivate business with the businesses that are already here I'll compare that with with a special event permit and I, I've mentioned before that I would support a food truck rally downtown, even in front of restaurants, because I think that would generate people walking around and that would bring business to the, to the downtown. So I, I would distinguish that, distinguish that type of concept from this food truck concept, because to me it's, it's, it, it would do nothing but take away uh, the opportunity for the, the businesses down here, specifically the restaurants uh, and retailers, everybody, to, to benefit from the additional people that, that these businesses bring. So I, I don't think we should support um, such an amendment.
He's calling again. It, and, is, is anybody else have anything? Okay, okay. Because I want to add something. What, what, what I do, I... Put it on mute. Yeah. 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 I did want to mention everybody is that this is before us because the Planning Commission did ask us to take a stand either for this okay. or against this. So, okay. I mean, I think uh, they'll be looking for us to either okay. either support this or not support this. Director Riley. No, 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 well, well, no go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, I'm going to just take a little different approach here uh, on this. Um, I I have no issue with food trucks. I I I think that they're they're great. I think that they. Um, can benefit the city of Royal Oak um, in certain circumstances and situations. Of course, all the festivals, of course, all the one-day permits for anybody, for any establishment that wants to do it, liquor license or no. Um, I, I do believe that there is a, a time and a place for these. On the flip side of that, I don't agree with the fact that a food truck should be utilized in replacement for a full-service kitchen facility on a permanent basis. If this was something that was being done on a temporary basis while construction was going on, I could support that. If this was something um, something had to be done, I, I could support that too. But on a permanent basis for to replace a, a kitchen with a food truck, I just don't think is a good idea. Not only for the city of Royal Oak, I, don't, I just don't think it's a good idea for any city, uh, any of the surrounding cities. Um, two other uh, approaches that I wanted to look at was I'm concerned about a little bit about some in the downtown area here we both we have both commercial and residential and some of these liquor license properties abut up against residential um, properties and there's a lot of patios there's a lot of balconies on these residential properties we don't know what the parking of these food trucks is going to lead into. Um, they obviously need generators. They, there could be trash issues, there could be noise issues, we don't know. And I'm sure that our departments will monitor all of that, but for people that are coming down and, and buying property down here for um, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars I'm, dollars I'm not sure that they want to sit out on their balcony, balconies and look at food trucks. I'm not sure that that's what they came to Royal Oak for. So that's that's one issue. And then the other, uh, my last statement is this. I, I'm concerned about as we move forward here in the future. We're discussing this right now uh, based on Mr. Twing's comments that there's probably only a couple that may even qualify for this at this point. But um, I take uh, Director Riley's uh, comments into um, the Baskin Robbins thing and that being private property and, and what could that be utilized for but I'm also looking at um, future um, we our, our City Commission has had a policy lately where um, we're allowing um, significant amount of, of liquor licenses to be transferred into the city from other cities so now I guess myself as a business owner I could say I can go to another city I can buy a liquor license from somewhere uh, outside of Royal Oak, I can spend $25,000, I can go and lease a food truck and then find myself a property in Royal Oak that's attached to a building and there I am, I'm up and running. Um, and that could spiral into quite a bit of action and property. And not to say that bringing those businesses would be a bad idea, but I, I just... I, I'm 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 not sure that I can support this is the way that it stands right now. <laughs> um, I I agree with everything that's been said here. Um, food trucks have burned me several times in relationships with the restaurant association. Some events that I've tried to 
to uh, bring to downtown Royal, Royal Oak. However, in this uh, incarnation, I don't feel that it's it's a good use. Um, and I want to give the, the applicants um, a perfect example of a relationship that I created with Tony. Um, people wanted food during my shows, and we created a carryout menu at 515 and got our food from Fifth Avenue. Um, and it worked out beautifully until Tony broke up with me. <laughs> 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 so there, you know, there are other ways to 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 get to the same result and where other people benefit. So I'm not going to support this as written, and I can't believe that I'm saying that about food trucks, but I am. I know. And and, and and Gary said it beautifully in this in this incarnation, and and and, and the thing is. We are at a time where, and, 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 and the commission and everybody has come out and said, city government needs to help businesses surrounding, particularly surrounding the William Street parking lot and everybody affected with the construction that's going on. And Director Sapphire, when you said while construction is going on, um, I just want to clarify, I think you meant, I'm assuming you meant like construction of a kitchen for a place or something, not this construction going on. Correct. And okay. if they needed a food truck to supplement them in the meantime while they were building, while they were building their kitchen. I would support that. Okay, okay. And so, and so um, everyone has come out and said, look, we have to do everything we can to help businesses and surrounding businesses. And this, this as it's drafted, is, only, is going to help one business while it hurts and potentially destroys, potentially destroys several others. And anybody who wants to shake their head at, at the ability, at the possibility that one bad day or one bad night could severely affect one of these surrounding restaurants. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it can be that, it's a risk I'm not willing to take. So all that, all that um, said, um, I, would, I would like to propose that, that we um, craft a resolution uh, from the DDA uh, vehemently opposing this. Uh, so many changes. But that is the, the, the zoning changes. Yeah. All right. If you want, you want, I'll take that as a yeah motion. And can we can we leave vehemently in there? <laughs> Second. Second, my director Yasbek. All right. Um, I guess all I'll say is I agree with everything that's been set up here. This is not a good thing. So. All right. We got a motion on the table. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? That sounds like a unanimous vote. Okay, on to our committee updates. Who should, should we deal with? Uh, I was going to do that. Okay. No, no, I'm sorry. On their infrastructure. I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Uh, our next. consumer marketing committee was basically limited to uh, uh, interviewing the applicants for the um, PR contract and awarding it to factory. That's okay. It was. Marketing contract. Is yeah. that what I said? Yeah. yeah. That's it? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Gary. Um, infrastructure, Mr. Safaya? Yeah, we just uh, we dealt with a couple of uh, facade grant applications, one <coughs> which we, we brought to you tonight, uh, and a few minor other uh, issues, but nothing of any significant importance to, to report at this time. Um, if... The DDA is willing and acceptable. Um, did you want to talk about that now? Or do you sure. Want to, okay. Um, if the DDA is agreeable, um, I would suggest that we give um, um, National Valet the opportunity to come back to the Infrastructure Committee uh, for discussion. Um, I'm sure that Mr. Lane and Mr. Richards are sure are very aware that the board may not change its mind. It may continue on with this current recommendation, but I just feel it's proper to give them the venue and the year that they're looking for and give them a chance to speak to the committee. So, Is that um, a motion? Uh, I will make that motion, yes. Okay. Do I hear a second? I will second it. Second by Director Pat. Let's give Director London the second. Oh, also, okay. Any discussion to this? Um, we'll schedule a meeting as soon as we can. 
Uh, we ordinarily we meet the first week of uh, each month. Uh, I'll be gone the first week of August out of the country. But uh, okay. Well, if you uh, decide to meet next week, I can make it. I, I'll not. coordinate with Tim, and okay. we'll figure. We, something. we got one member of the committee that's not here today, uh, Director Krieger. So we probably want to include him, but we'll through Mr. Twing, we'll we'll get that straightened out with you guys. I know. I've been waiting. So all right. Um, so I got a motion. I got a second. Um, all those in favor of sending this back to the committee? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. All right. Uh, anything else for the infrastructure? No, that's it. And the business marketing committee? I, I, I had to check my notes, but I'm shocked we didn't meet. We did not meet. <laughs> Must be nothing going on. And we put in <laughs> three years worth of meetings. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, is there anything else on committees? Anybody want to? We no, the, well, the business marketing committee is really waiting for some oh. information from yes. uh, the gentleman with red smoke in that yes. presentation. Right. So uh, that's why we really haven't scheduled a meeting. We're still waiting for them. That's to right. Something. That's right. And we so. we should make that clear to everybody that uh, that you know we we did um, that Sean and I did meet with Tasso uh, the week after our meeting, and we've agreed to meet with him. Uh, go back to the committee, the business marketing committee. Actually, go back to the committee, but go to the committee. It never was before the committee, right. which is a lot. The root of the problem here is that it just it all came up in an open meeting. Committee meetings are open meetings too, but uh, Mr. Tassel is certainly going to get his, his time in front of us. So that will happen at the committee level. So, uh, and when they're ready, the ball's in their court, uh, and they contact him. We'll schedule a meeting and get that done. Perfect. So if I forget, we'll wait. So once that occurs, then we'll set a meeting and go over that and then bring it back to the table. Sure. All right. So I guess that ends the committee updates. Uh, other business reports? Uh, Sean. Just briefly walk, uh, walk you through my monthly downtown manager's report. Uh, just some Main Street updates. Um, we talked about uh, allocating the technical assistance dollars from Oakland County Main Street towards uh, design services for the library site as part of the city center project. Um, so I brought that up to Oakland County Main Street. They actually said that they can provide those design services for free to us anyway. Uh, and so we had, Tim and I both have a meeting um, uh, for July 20th with Ron Campbell, who's the, uh, the, the staff architect for Oakland County. And we're gonna go over you know, basically the, the scope of the work and see the extent to which he can he can offer some assistance. Sure. Um, that leads me to my next item, which is that frees up those technical assistance dollars for us to allocate and really in any manner we see fit. And uh, Director Riley and uh, Chair Dunstan, uh, you, when you met with Oakland County uh, Main Street representatives uh, up at the county campus, they gave you some examples of how we could allocate those dollars. So. Um, it was brought up at our last meeting that, uh, you know, perhaps we could focus on some other items in that downtown task force report. And one of the remaining items was strengthening our retail downtown. So I'd like to maybe bring a couple ideas or proposals to the next business marketing committee and maybe we could discuss that and how those dollars could be allocated. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, directed towards strengthening retail. That's just one uh, potential way that we could do that. Um, there's a wide variety of uh, options that we could allocate that money. Um, next item is uh, we have completed two of the four scheduled uh, lunch and learns, which are geared towards retailers and store owners downtown. It's kind of a rotating hour-long uh, workshop. Uh, DDA is picking up the cost of lunch for the attendees. Uh, so we've completed the first one, which was at Mesa, second one was at Hopcat. Uh, next week we'll be meeting at Cafe Muse. That'll be Tuesday at noon. So I encourage all business owners to, uh, to attend, whether you're retailers or not. Uh, I'd, I'd love to get a really good uh, showing of attendance at these. So, um, and I've included the schedule in, in my report as well. Uh, the workshop Retail in the Age of Amazon that was offered by Main Street, Oakland County, uh, wrapped up its its final uh, session this past Monday too, and I got some great feedback from the uh, the owner at High High and Lift. So they brought some staff members there. They said it was it was fantastic. So 
Uh, I believe there were some other people from Sh Sean, how, I went. I'm sorry. And you went. To, how was it? How's the attendance been yeah, at, at okay. the stuff? Is the attendance at, at, at both at both the uh, the launch and learns and at the um, retail um, workshops out out at Oakland County? Has the attendance been okay? I mean, it's been okay. Um, ideally, I I would have liked to see a much higher turnout for the lunch and learns. Lunch and learns, okay. honestly, and I I still think there's there's room for that to improve. Um, so and I, um, I'm assuming that everybody understands that it just doesn't have to be owners; that it can be. I don't think that right. they do. Um, that's something that I want to to start telling people that it doesn't necessarily have to be an exactly. owner. Exactly. I sent three of my staff. Yeah, that's, that, I, I think that's where it's really, that's where it's right. really and, crafted and for. Goldfish Tea sent staff members there okay. as well. I think and then may, Gary some people may staff. be under the impression that it, that it is yeah. strictly to business owners. And right, and I, I have talked to some retailers who say, you know, if, if you did anything before 11, I can definitely attend, but as soon as some, if it's after 11, you know, I don't have the staff to spare to do anything. So I, I have run into that. The people who have attended, I've I've gotten nothing but glowing reviews okay. from these events. So, um, it's definitely something that we'll have to grow. Uh, there will be more opportunities. Uh, so, I uh, I have all my flyers. I've been sending out more uh, uh, notifications, and I've been hitting the pavement, uh, passing out the information. And we sent out a mailer too to every address in downtown. Um, the downtown website is. Uh, now fully moved over. I'm working with IT right now to redirect the domain name downtownroyaloak.org to the new site. Um, so that is completed. Um, after many, many weeks of tedious data entry, it's, it's completed. So the, uh, the business database that's on the new site is completely updated and cleaned too, so there shouldn't be any dead links or, or uh, outdated information on that. Um, Spotlight program is actually doing remarkably well. We're moving into uh, featuring our seventh business for that. Uh, I've also had amazing reviews on that. I've looked at our social media insights that shows us, you know, how many engagements we're getting, how many likes, follows. Uh, it's all going up in a positive direction. So um, I'm, uh, I'm really pleased to see how well that that's doing. And uh, we're getting some great feedback on that. And it's giving us a lot of original content. It's also giving me a pretty good encyclopedic knowledge of every every business we feature every month because or every week because uh, we write an article about it as well and you know we post it there so um, the uber lift promo code that uh, finished up uh, the evening of the 14th so I talked to Lyft and they emailed me the stats I forwarded them on to the business marketing committee I didn't know if you had a chance to look at those and maybe we can discuss you know you know next steps, whether or not you feel like it was worthwhile, and, and whether or not we'd like to continue that. Uh, a quick, quick question, Sean, and in what, in what we forwarded to us, they said, uh, here was the, 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 and I'll read this, Saturday was in our top 15 for number of rides in the 48067 zip code. Do they mean that Saturday was one of their top 15 nights of all time that 48067 was in? I didn't understand what that meant. I had to revisit that, too, because that was strangely worded to me. Yeah, yeah. What I believe, what that was trying to say, that within the zip code, that code was, or that that destination when people used that code was within the top 15 within that zip code, which which didn't seem that significant to me. I, I, I'm, Saturday was in our top 15 for number of, I think what, the, well, the way I read it, I think what they're saying is that the Saturday or last weekend was in their top 15 for Lyft for all time of rides coming into 48067. That's, yeah, that's, that's how okay. I... Okay. That's pretty good. That's yeah, pretty good. yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. um, and the other, thing, the other thing I didn't understand, 138 people applied, applied the code. 43 took a ride with the code. So some people applied it and then didn't take the ride. I don't understand that. Correct, yeah. So uh, I was on the phone with uh, the representative from Lyft, and he... he kind of broke that down for me, is that they can apply the code to their account, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to complete the transaction and actually Got have it. a ride. So, Got it. Uh, there were that many people who were interested and applied the code and responded to it, um, but I believe what I okay. say, there was, a, there was a fewer number that, that took the ride into downtown. So I think we got a lot of exposure on this. You know, we had, you know, the press release that went out, I know it was covered in cranes, WXYZ covered it. Um, you know, the Tribune did an article on it. We uh, we boosted social media posts to advertise it there too. So, um, 
I think we got the exposure there, but I think if we really want to traction. have this grow and have it yeah. traction, I think it has to be done for more than one weekend. Um, and can, can I make a suggestion if we can, uh, but, but one, we're going to have a business marketing com com meeting really soon. I think this needs to be at the, at, right on the agenda. And I think we need to do this in conjunction with some type of, 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 of PR, mm -hmm. whether it's from, so that we get our message. And, we, and, 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 I, and, the, and the, 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 the press release was great, and it got picked up by a few sites. But you know what? The, gosh darn it. The free press and the news, um, they're all eager to pick up 50% parking increase when, when it's a quarter, when you're going from 50 to 75%. But 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 and, and they're willing to pick up that that a, re, uh, a restaurant that's been here 20 years is closing because of the parking issue because 99 percent of their people park in that lot when in fact the new parking deck is a shorter walk and I understand some people don't like to park in parking decks but 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 is a shorter walk than some of the spots that were in that lot I understand all that so when we have something good that we're doing I something good we need to get it right there with it. I, I think the reason why this was picked up is because it was such a hot news topic at the time. I think the timing about traffic and the well, town, well, well, I think otherwise we probably wouldn't have seen It was picked up, but not in the same locations. I mean, it wasn't, when you tapped on your, when you tapped on your free press and news app, it wasn't one of the top 15 stories. I mean, it, and, and, and again, and again, the, the PR efforts were, were fine and they were great, but if we had a professional PR firm who had contacts and who was whatever, who knew how to get, who, who, who wanted to get the story out there, it would have been royal. The, the city that, does have a PR firm. Well, the PR firm is not doing anything for us. I know, but they do have a PR firm. <laughs> I understand that. But, 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 but right, wrong, or different, they're not doing it for us. I that, just don't want us to be sidelined who we hired us for marketing, and his job is a long-term, consistent message. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about them at all. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, that was why I asked right. the question of them. No, no, that's not their job. But I'm just saying that to do this right, we need to get the word out on, and, and, and the headline would be Royal Oaks offering free rides, or for five dollars off a rides, something like that. Be ahead of the issue, not exactly, exactly. No, no, no. I was not worried about that at all. Positive PR is not quite as exciting as negative PR. Well, but, well, well. But we again, need to run with this positive PR. But but and it's it's tougher to get positive PR in into the spots that you want it, which is why we might need to retain somebody to do that for us. So, Sean, 43 riders, that's what, $215? Right. So, I mean, if you wanted to ask, if we wanted Sean to continue with this, we could. Well, we need to make, we need to decide real quick if we want to take a, another look at this. We, I mean, if it, if it tripled right. to $650 be okay this weekend. Yeah. I don't think it, so, I mean, if you wanted to tell him to, I, I mean. Towards. Keep it going. Well, I, I would say. In, instead of just allocating the money toward the rides themselves, but you know, designating some sort of promotional budget specifically for 100%. it that's, that's authorized for us to Social go out media. and get some ads or, or you know, boost a press release to. But this to would be something venues, that factory would would help with, you know. So, but I, I mean, I myself, if if you wanted to do it again this weekend and the following weekend, I mean, I, I'm I'm fine with it. I mean, in, in light of the amazing reaction to our. Offer last week, and we're continuing it because, yeah, and, 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 so well and, received. And, and factory factory is, is going to do. They'll work in conjunction as an answer. But, but and and the, the, my question is, do do we just? Uh, I like the idea of keeping it going, but 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 again, at some point, I would like to really 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 boost the PR on this. I think I think it's important because it's something positive. Yeah, okay, so the, we're, we're talking two separate things. We're talking yep. the ad agency to market this, and then we're talking the PR people to talk it up. Correct. Okay. To place right. it, yes. So, I mean, if, if I, I, th I think it would be a good idea. I, I think it would be a good idea to keep it going, uh, but I think it would be best if and uh, maybe we do it right now, and then we'll let you finish. And if, if someone wants to make a motion to let him continue to do this, either Thursday, Friday, Saturday is what you've been doing, right? That's what we did the first We're time. We're capped at the three. Well, the three. I, I'm capped at three grand, yeah. so I, I authorize it going forward under my authority. So if you want to continue it for some period of time, I would suggest you do so and make a motion to to continue it. So. But 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 between now and the next meeting, if we if we were to hit the cap, would we be? Can we raise the cap here? Or no, right now. No, no. 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 no.
can't win people. I don't know what you'd be guessing at what you'd raise it. Yeah, yeah but, but but I'm I'm just saying just in well, I, 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 I don't would think just think say make okay. the motion to okay. run it to run it for the next till the next meeting. Right. Okay. What it costs is what it costs. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So, I mean, you okay with us doing that? Uh, if I'm, uh, I think it'd be best if. Okay, I, I'd like I'd like to make a motion to continue this um, on the weekends. Till at least until we meet the next time for every weekend, and to, and to blitz it as, as whatever you need to do to blitz it, and then we need to figure out yeah. something further. All right, so uh, the next that's meeting. a motion. Yep. Okay. Second. A second by Director yes, but Is there a spending cap on that? No, we're nope. we're telling you to do it. And then we'll we'll take a look at it at our uh, August meeting, okay. assess it. One million dollars. There we go. <laughs> Sean bankrupted the city. If, if it. <laughs> well, Sean, you got to work in conjunction with Mr. Twing because <laughs> Mr. Twing's only <laughs> authorized to <laughs> <It's> authorized <laughs> but, uh, to uh, he's, he's only only authorized. Where, where I think you're going with it is, you you've said to continue the lift promotion, so that's a promotion at five dollars per ride. Per weekend right. until your August meeting or till the weekend Correct. prior to Correct. that. As far as boosting it, we already have an allocation per month. It That's would really simply be that Sean would boost it in that current allocation of Three funds. Miles. It's until we get okay. yeah. yeah. okay. dollars per okay. month. Okay. 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 But then, but then, and also then we can the change the marketing committee. I want to discuss yeah. this. We can. Yeah. Okay. 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 Any other discussion on this? I mean, if, if the lift rides get out of control, that's a good thing. That'd be, that, any, that'd be wonderful. Is there any um, thought to increasing the social media budget? Currently, it's at 1000 we, We're going to discuss that at Business Marketing, but we'll this listen. is just to get us through. This is just to get us through until the next Business Marketing Committee but meeting. With the budget for boosting social media right now is only 100 bucks A month, 25 that, hours a week. That's not a lot. And he wants to do the, his I gotcha. highlight of his businesses, his, his weekly businesses, spotlight businesses. I couldn't think of a phrase. So, so do we need to boost that? Well, I, I mean, well, let's do, we should deal with one motion at a time. Okay. Let's, at least. let's deal with this then. Okay. Uh, so get a motion on the table. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 As opposed, okay. motion carries. Gary, do you want to, you want to make that motion? To, to increase the social media budget to... One million dollars. <laughs> 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 um, Actually, you know, like this. <laughs> I, I would defer to the recommendations of. Uh, I would say five hundred. Okay, make a motion. I want to increase uh, Sean's uh, social media bu boosting budget to five hundred dollars a month. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Second by Director Riley, moved by Director Baglio. So we'll, we'll, we'll do this, and I think, <coughs> and we'll get a vote on it. But um, we can always come back at the uh, at the August meeting, and we can gauge how we think this worked out, and uh, and if we need to adjust up or down what we're talking about right now, we can do that at that point. So this will basically, we're if we're going to look at it again in August, we're authorizing five hundred dollars between now and our August meeting. Yeah, and, and, and again, I just think that, that, that particularly right now, that, that, that we, we, look, any positive things that we can get out there uh, about us in the media, and, and I, I, wish, I wish that we had a PR firm that was more boosting and, and putting stuff out there of, of, of the good and some of the good that's going to come from this stuff and that it's not all just pain, that there is, that there is gain with pain. I'd love to see some sort of contest. Yeah. I made out of it between all the businesses downtown. So we, we, we kind of contact. So that, that that's that's another that's another thing, Sean. That that, that and, and I know it's it's Wednesday, and unfortunately tomorrow is Thursday. But but we just the, the word of mouth, whatever we can do to spread this this lift thing and 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 get it out there and make sure people understand that basically it's anything into the central downtown area. Because if you do two t two tenths of a mile from Third and Main, it goes a lot further. If you go out like that and out like that, then you might think so. And that's just a drop-off point, anyway. So, Dr. Yesbitt, nothing. That's on hand. We got a vote on this. Anything else? I'll call nope. for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Continue. He's still got stuff.
Um, I'll just say we covered most of the other items in my report except for the uh, the last item, which is the signs for parking around the construction site have been installed. So they're currently up. Uh, one is at the corner of Third and Williams, directing people to go to the Center Street garage, and then the other one is at Second uh, Street, where it terminates at the construction site. Excellent. Thank you. And then, oh. Also, banners are currently on their way. We should probably see them installed, I imagine, by next week, within the next week. And those will go up at, at 11 and at 5th? Right. Okay. okay. What committee did that, those banners? <laughs> What's that? Just curious, because I want to show my banner. What, what committee was that? Committee of one. <laughs> <laughs> it was just okayed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Because I think the banners on the street poles are much more effective. You're parking a car, you see, oh, there's two feet, two hours of the meter, two yeah. hours of parking street. And then I think, Lori, will be more of a long-term thing right. with yeah. their friends at, at Factory. I think this is more of a... This is... This short is a, term. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, the next item took Tim 30 years yeah. to put it, together. That, that, that was amazing to look at. Oh, yeah. Oh, I just gave it for your information. I, I tried to update it from 2009 when it was last put together. So now that the property has been sold and there are no pieces left, uh, it's 96. If you're here or at home, go to the agenda and click on this and just go through. And uh, Laura, I know you lived through a lot of this yourself, but this this is uh, incredible. This thing. It's like it's like a pinball machine of things that have happened. So. It, yeah. it's, a, it's a chronology of... of uh, 696 site. 696 site. Go, go. I have the original... Mr. Twing, Twing has done an incredible chronology of this. Going back to 84. Yeah, so I would strongly suggest everybody take a look at it. It's been a very interesting read. We have a recording of it at the theater when they presented it to us. It's <laughs> <laughs> going... Our last item on the agenda is parking signs. We just talked about this, that. so um, there's a couple street banners coming. And, um, we've kind of reached the end of the agenda. Is there anything else uh, we need to schedule? We really all three committees need to be scheduling. Yeah. Uh, so if we could, Lori's going to be out. Of, you're both going to be out of time for the next consumer marketing. Can we push that forward a week? Next week. Yes. So we'll yeah, fine with me. <laughs> yeah, good for you. Send out an email. Yeah, we'll uh, do a doodle or whatever. Something, yeah. Yep. Okay, move. Is, is everyone around it. next week? Okay. Try to do all next week. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Well, I was going to say, Jason's not here, so I don't know how we're going to get out of here. Do I get a motion by uh, Director Yasbich to adjourn? I'll, I'll Second by Director Safaya. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carried. Good night.